Another strong quarter for options with the exception of bonds, and that's because long-term interest rates are going up, therefore the values go down. But it's continued the theme over predominantly since COVID that the higher risk options are outperforming the lower risk options and that's continuing as the market's recovering and equities are going up and we're seeing as post COVID we're seeing a, a repricing in all asset classes. So in this quarterly, we talk a lot about inflation. There's been a lot more talk about inflation. What does that mean? Typically, that means prices are going up more, so your purchasing power is going down. We're seeing that now in, in petrol pricing, computer chips, food, when you go shopping, shipping things, cars. So pricing is going up. And we think that's a temporary phenomenon because of COVID and the increased demand as the economies are opening up. So we are seeing higher inflation at the moment, but we do think that will start to moderate in the out years. But nonetheless, that has some effects. And particularly in the fixed income, the bond options, as long-term interest rates goes up, that affects the returns of that particular option and in time could affect other options if interest rates go up by too much. We don't, however, think inflation will be a systemic long-term issue and therefore it will moderate from here, but nonetheless, currently, we're seeing some inflationary uh, pressures. So the question following on from the earlier one is, how are we prepared for higher inflation and interest rates? A couple of things we would say to that. First of all, we have asset class diversification. So our portfolios are broadly diversified. The second thing is we actually have less in fixed income. So for the as interest rates start to rise and bonds start to underperform, we're less exposed to that environment. And we're also more exposed to what we call value strategies and equities and reopening um, type businesses throughout the world. So as we go through post COVID and the economy opens up, these types of assets do well. Good example being Adelaide Airport. So we think we're well placed in a high interest rate, high inflationary world through diversification and through the type of businesses that we've invested in. And hence we think the returns will do okay in that environment. First of all, we, we have broad diversification and we rarely change unless there's major market movements. But the current themes in our portfolio are to hold investments that will do better in a post-COVID world, i.e. as the economy opens up, energy, commodities, what we call cyclical businesses, airports, those types of industries and assets will do really well. And follow on to the, uh, the earlier questions, we think that's been the slight adjustment we've made, but it's important that we don't react too much to the markets, other than the theme that we do see higher inflation and interest rates in the short term that moderates in the longer term. As you may have read, and we'll talk a little bit about this as we get closer to the end of the year, both the CEO and myself as CIO uh, running the investment portfolio, we are talking about a merger with Host Plus. We're currently doing the due diligence. Suffice to say that from an investment point of view, we see lots of synergies for our members in this merger, but we'll have more to say at the end of this year once uh, the due diligence has been conducted and signed by both boards. And then we'll come back to you with some information.